It is recorded by Jewish historian Josephus that Emmaus in Jerusalem could well be the place earlier called Ayalon, the place where the sun stood still until General Joshua's battle with the Amorites ended in victory. On the third day, after Pesach Passover in the year 4 BCE, something also happened there that day. Two men, distressed, discouraged, and defeated at the terrible death of their leader and friend, Yeshua Jesus of Nazareth, walked back home to Emmaus village from the terror of that day three days ago. As they walked on the road, discussing the events, they were joined by a man who didn't seem to know of recent events in Jerusalem, but who did seem to have answers to the man's point of questions about the event, explaining who the Messiah was from Moses. This is the path we tread, the ancient path from Moses to Messiah, tracing our steps from the Hebrew roots of our Christian faith to the road of Emmaus village to the 21st century today. Rev Media presents The Road to Emmaus Village. Studies of the complete gospel from Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. The Torah, Nebi'im, and Ketuvim. To Messiah in the Brit Madasha. In the Hebraic perspective of our Christian faith. Shalom. This is the continuing account of that happy day. As they came to Cleophas Alpheus' house, they bade him stay the night and sit with us at the evening meal. Then the man took up the piece of matzah, made a baraka, blessed the father for the meal, broke it, and handed it to them. Suddenly their eyes were opened. Then the man disappeared. They leapt to their feet, headed toward the door, talking excitedly, saying, didn't our hearts burn when he spoke to us on the road, opening up the Tanakh to us? We must tell the others. They raced back toward Yerushalayim to tell the eleven and the rest of their brethren huddled together at an upper room away from the Roman authorities. At Aihalon, where the long overnight battle of Joshua ended in the defeat of the Amorites, the sun stood still as a witness to the victory won there. At Amaus, in proclamation of his victory, Yeshua Jesus opened the eyes of the man to who he is down through history from Moses, the Messiah of Israel. There we believe that time and eternity met when Messiah bridged the connection between his eternal I am and his divine conquest and victory as the risen son of God on earth. Long prevented from recognizing Jesus as the Jewish Yeshua, who was Torah of servant, who knew the Shema by heart, who kept the Shabbat and the Moedim feast, so must we let the Jewish Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, open our eyes and walk with us so that we may fully understand through his Hebraic roots and perspective, his teachings and correctly in context, apply this to our lives. And also say, didn't our hearts burn inside us as he spoke to us on the road opening up the Torah, the prophets, the Tanakh, the Older the Testament to us. Walk with us on our journey in the road to Amaus village. Shalom, Yom Tov, good day. First, we start by thanking Abba, our Father, Yeshua Mashiach, His Son, and the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. Also, thanks to dear friends who encourage us and are praying for us to produce this weekly Yeshua-centered Messianic educational TV program, The Road to Amaus Village, which goes on the air Saturdays every Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat blessings be upon us, you and your family, your kihila. Let us now honor Abba and set this Shabbat day apart with this prayer. Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has kept us and preserved us and enabled us to reach this season. In Yeshua, Jesus' name, amen. Barukata Adonai Eloheinu Meleka Olam, 
שהציינו וקיימנו והציינו לזמן הזה בשם ישוע המשיח, אמן. As it was on the road to Amaus, so must we let the Jewish Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, walk with us, so that we may fully understand through his Hebraic perspective, his teachings, and correctly in context apply this to our lives and realize, didn't our hearts burn inside us as he spoke to us on the road, opening up the Tanakh to us? Through the years, our eyes were prevented from knowing Jesus in all his Jewishness like air plants hung in the air with no roots. We weren't mindful that Jesus Yeshua was Torah of servant, that he knew the Shema by heart, that he devarot, the Ten Commandments, that he was a Shabbat keeper and observed the Moedim feast, that he was kosher, and so many other things that he did and taught that we didn't see without the Hebraic perspective. To be Talmudim or true disciples of Yeshua Mashiach, we must study the Torah, to be rooted in the Hebraic roots of our Christian faith. Last week, remember, we, the grafted-in branches of the good olive tree, are to be not arrogant, but are nourished by the rich root of the patriarchs. Today, we will learn more about the return to the appreciation of Israel, the Jews and Hebrew scriptures. Once at our daughter's birthday dinner, a noted Chinese Christian guest asked me, Brother Oni, while of a sudden, so much interest on Israel, the Jews, Hebrew, the Rak HaKodesh gave me the answer. I replied, if the Messiah were Chinese, I would waste no time but study the Chinese teachings, the people, visit China, dig up its history, language, song and dance, etc. However, Yeshua HaMashiach was a Jew, is a Jew, and will come back a Jew at Mount Olives, Jerusalem, providing salvation for all mankind in the backdrop of a Jewish people, the land of Israel, and Hebrew scriptures. When he opens his mouth, the words that we will hear will not be Filipino or English with an American accent, but Hebrew, Shalom. Again, citing what Rav Shaul wrote in Romans 9, we certainly have to be connected to the Jews, Israel, and the Hebrew scriptures, to whom belong the adoption of sons, the Shekinah glory of God, the covenants, the giving of the Torah, from whom is the Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, God forever blessed. Amen. God is placing in the hearts of his Bekirim, chosen ones, a hunger to recover our lost inheritance. The more we understand our roots, the more we will understand the Brit Hadashah, the Gospels and the Apostolic Writings or Epistles of Rav Shaul, and walk in the direct, the way, the emet, the truth, and high, the life, God's way. Yeshua HaMashiach is the living Torah. What is Torah? Torah basically refers to God's word recorded by Moshe or Moses in written scrolls called Sefer Torah as what we know as the first five books of the Hebrew scriptures and the Bible. Genesis or Bereshit in Hebrew meaning in the beginning, Exodus or Shemot meaning names, Leviticus or Vayikra and he called Numbers or Bamidvar wilderness and Deuteronomy or Devarim words. In Hebrew, the title usually comes from the first key words of the section. Thus, in the first chapter of the next book, we find the most often quoted verse, Joshua 1.8, but also taken out of context. The Lord spoke to him, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have success. In context, this book of the law refers essentially to the Torah. Firstly, to be read and correctly understood in the right Hebrew perspective, other than to mean other books of the Bible. Every time you read the word law in your Bible, make a mental note, changing it to mean Torah. Nothing wrong with earnestly trying to obey all the one another teachings in the Newer Testament, but have we realized we may be trying improperly to carry out what we think God wants without first considering what he has laid down in the basic foundational teachings of the Torah? Once I ask myself, Kabisado mo na bang Torah? Ano yun? Yet we have even gone to interpreting revelation. The Hebrew word Torah comes from its root word yara, 
meaning to lay or throw, as in to shoot an arrow or to hit the mark, figuratively to point out, to teach, to instruct. In a negative sense, sin is defined as missing the mark. Torah is also defined literally as instructions or teaching. God's instructions or teachings from heaven on how we are to live our lives the way God wants us to. Our text, therefore, is the complete Jewish Bible, the gospel of good news from Bereshit, Genesis, to hit Galot, Revelation, all 66 books of the Bible. Nothing added like extra-biblical material such as the oral Torah, later written as the Babylonian or Jerusalem Talmud, with commentaries by the sages, the Targum, Midrash, Misna, Tosefta, Gemara, and the like, all full of wisdom, but whose writers were not believers in Yeshua. Ezra, journeying from Babylon to Jerusalem, after the temple was restored, had set his heart to study the Torah of the Lord, to practice it, and to teach his statutes and ordinances in Israel. King David, in Psalms 1, writes, How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the God, the ungodly. But his delight is in the law, rather, the Torah of the Lord, and in his Torah he meditates day and night. And he will be like a tree planted by streams of water, living water, the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, which yields its fruit in its season, its leaf does not wither, and whatever, when whatever he does, he prospers. Also in Psalm 19, verse 7, David specifies the Torah is perfect, restoring the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. More desirable than gold, sweeter than honey. Moreover, by the Torah, thy servant is warned, and in keeping the Torah, there is great reward. Yeshua HaMashiach, the living Torah, who lives in hearts, filled with the Ruach HaKodesh. That's right. Would you like to follow Ezra, a descendant of Phinehas, a man jealous for God, a grandson of Aaron, to set our heart to study the Torah of the Lord, to practice it, apply its teachings in our lives, live it, and in turn, teach God's statutes and ordinances in Israel to the Jew first and to the Gentiles and to the ends of the earth. Spread the word. Tell family and friends to be with us on the road to Amawu's village, the Hebraic roots of our Christian faith, from Moses to Messiah in the balance, Saturdays every Shabbat. Next week, our study will seek answers to the question, is Torah law? Yeshua and the Torah? Yeshua and the Shema? In the next portion, meet the Messianic rabbis. Let us hear our dear friend and true yoke fellow from New Jersey, New York, USA. Jewish Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman. Hebrew scriptures foretold of the anointed one, Yeshua HaMashiach. The Messiah Yeshua came to call the people back to the truth of his word and to follow that righteous path. Yeshua then called Jewish men to be his disciples. Now, after 2,000 years, Beth Goyim Messianic Congregation has that same calling of those Jewish men, teaching the Route 66 King's Highway from Genesis through to Revelation. Three brief overview sections in relation to this particular parash reading. Section one, the Torah. Section two, how this parash fits in the New Testament. Shalom Mishpukah. Welcome to the Road to Emmaus Village, number 11. This po portion that we're gonna be doing is called Korach. It is from the book of Bamidbar, chapter 16, verse one, through chapter 18, verse 32. This is a very strong passage when people come against leadership. There was a time where the people of Israel, they had left Mitzrayim, they had left Egypt, and they're traveling along, and we have the Bible to look at. They were living it. Where we're living it right now in a different section, we're still in the book of Acts because the book of Acts never ended, but here 
these people had never read or seen what we see them happening to their lives. And this group, Korak, they came against Moshe and Aaron, and 250 other families had sided with Korak. And they came against Moshe saying, you know what, you're not the only anointed one, we're anointed also. Okay, so Moshe comes to them and says, okay, you guys stand over there, your group stand over there, we'll stand over here. This is all in chapter 16 of the book of Bamidbar, okay? And you get your fire pans ready, and you get your, your censers ready with the, the incense, and we're going to come together. You guys will be over there, Aaron and myself will be over here. And he's gonna, he said, he's going to let the Lord choose between who he wants and who he doesn't want. Okay, in verse 26 it says, There he said to the assembly, Leave the tents of these wicked men. Don't touch anything that belongs to them, or you may be swept away with all your sins. Okay, so you have Moshe saying, Don't go over there, but if you don't want to take a warning of what's going on, you know what, you've been fairly warned. Okay, so people moved away from those groups of people, and then we read in verse chapter 16, verse 28, through 32, Moshe says, here is how you will know that Adonai has sent me to do all these things, and that I haven't done them out of my own ambition. If these men die, natural death like other people, only sharing the fate of common to all humanity, then Adonai has not sent me. But if Adonai does something new, if the ground opens up and swallows them with everything they own, and they go down alive to Sheol, then you will understand that these men have had contempt for Adonai. The moment he finished speaking, the ground under them split apart. The earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up with their households, all the people who had sided with Korak and everything they owned. Amen? It's something quite amazing there. The word Sheol, that is the word for hell. I know there's certain interesting religions out there that don't believe in hell, but there it is right there in verse 30. Chapter 16, verse 30, that the word hell appears. So these men came against the leadership, the anointed leadership. And then Moshe finished speaking, and then all these people were wiped away. But it isn't just them. If you look back at verse 27, it says, stay away from the entrance of their tents, of the, of their, of their tents and they had the people come to the entrance of the tent, each person of their own family, with their wives, their sons, and their little ones. Okay? So when these people came against Moshe and Aaron, and the Lord swept them away, it was not just Dayton. It was everybody gets swept away into hell because these people were not following the order of God. Okay? It's very important, especially the men, that you follow biblical order. The Torah is still valid today. And the Lord does sweep things away, as we saw in Japan, a whole wave to sweeping thousands and thousands and thousands of people away. But the sin is still going into the water because now we have radi radiation in the fish. And now we can't eat a good amount of the fish that are coming out of the waters of the Pacific, okay? Now, some people say, well, you know, we're under grace in the New Testament. I want to show you something, that when you don't follow the Torah of God, it's still in effect today. If you turn in your Bibles to Acts chapter 5, verses 1 through 11, you see a very interesting thing that happened. Now, Messiah was born, raised, had his ministry, crucified, put in the grave, raised from the grave, and he's now in heaven at this point, okay? And he's given his disciples, his Talmudin, orders to go do their work. Now we have the congregations. Now they're not churches popping up. They are messianic congregations like the one I'm in charge of here in New York. Okay, Beth Goim. Okay, but in chapter 5, verse 1 through 11, you see that a man named Hananiah came to Kepha and he had sold a house. And then Kepha said, did you... So, Kepha, that's Peter, did you sell a house for this certain price? And Hananiah said, yes, but he was lying. So as soon as he was completed his lie, and Kepha says, why do you lie to the Ruach HaKodesh? In verse 3, he died. Now, that's bad enough. 
But then we have another event. Hananiah's wife comes up, and they had buried Hananiah, and the men are coming in, and Kepha says to his wife, did you sell the house for such and so a price? And she says, yes. And then she falls down dead to right there in front of everybody. See, the law is still in effect. Here you have the people coming against Moshe and Aaron, and they get swallowed up and go into hell. And then you have Hananiah and his wife lying to Kepha. Now the question is, is hell still around in the Brit HaDashah, in the New Testament? When you look in 2 Kepha, 2 Peter chapter 2, um, verses 1 through 5, you see that in verse 4, For God did not spare the angels who sinned, on the contrary, he put them in gloomy dungeons lower than Sheol to be held for judgment. So here we see angels that came against God who he sent to hell in a place lower than hell. So we see that hell still does exist in the gospel of Kepha. I call them gospels because Kepha walked with the Lord. Okay? These are good writings and they're usually very informative. So here it is. You see in Acts chapter 5 and 2 Kepha chapter 2 that the law is still in effect because when you lie, thou shalt not lie, okay? So Hananiah and his wife, under the grace doctrine that some Christians say we don't have to follow these things anymore, I don't understand that because it's clear that these two lied in the book of Acts and died. It's clear that there is hell that we find in the book of Bamidbar that Peter, Kepha, the Jew, also says in his writings in 2 Kepha chapter 2, the ancient Hebrew scripture foretold of the anointed one, the Melech Yisrael, King of Israel, the Sar Shalom, Prince of Peace. Now, 2,000 years after the destruction of the Holy Temple in Israel, Jewish believers are once again telling Jew and Gentile about the Jewish Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus. Come out to Beth Goyim, House of the Nations, where Jew and Gentile worship Yeshua as one people. So it was in the beginning, so too shall it be in the end of days. Come out every Shabbat, Saturday, the Lord's Day, at 11 a.m. for Messianic worship and the word from a truly biblical perspective. Once again, thanks again for tuning in to the Remnant's Call. In the name above any and all other names, Yeshua HaMashiach. Shalom. And in the New Covenant passage of Jeremiah 31, we read the nation of Israel will never cease to exist. And we praise God for that. But it wasn't just a nation, it was a land. Genesis 17, 7 to 8 tells us that it's an everlasting possession. All the land of Canaan belongs to Israel. And according to the Bible, God has chosen to put his name and presence there forever. It's really his city. My name is uh, Ofer Amitai. I'm a pastor in Jerusalem. I was born here and raised here. From my mother's side, I'm seventh generation in this land. And I met the Messiah in uh, 1976. I was actually in India, far away from here, when the Lord appeared to me and came to me and revealed himself to me as, as the God of my fathers. That's actually what he spoke to me about. He said, I'm the God of your fathers, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. My name is Benjamin Berger. I'm a Messianic Jew living here in, in Israel. I myself uh, come from a religious Jewish background. I was brought up in uh, Orthodox uh, Judaism, 
in the United States. My parents were both um, refugees from the uh, Nazi persecution of the Jews and uh, managed to escape at the end of the 1930s. And um, a big part of our family didn't escape and were killed in uh, the concentration camps. But I was always, from very early in my childhood, wanting to somehow experience God, wanting to know in my own heart that God was real. One day, uh, when I returned home from work, I started again questioning myself about the whole area of faith. And I realized I didn't have any real faith. And as I was having these thoughts, uh, I suddenly had the very strong impression that there was someone in the room with me. Now I didn't see anybody, but I just had the sense of a presence in the room. And then this, uh, this presence seemed to get more and more intense. There was something very pure about it. And at the same time, I began to sense this, this love that I just immediately knew was from another world. And um, it came closer and closer to me. And it was as though somebody took a key and put it into my heart and turned it and opened the door, a very thick door. And this love just flowed right into my heart. And I sat there and I was weeping, still not at all understanding what was happening. And then I, I heard the voice of God, which shocked me. And what God said to me then was, I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and I'm your God. Well, this was absolutely startled me. And then something happened that uh, startled me even more. I just received one word in the Hebrew language, and it was Yeshua. And this was just by revelation. Uh, I knew that he was the Messiah, the God of Israel, and, um, and the answer to all of my questions. Thank you.